Everybody, what is up? It is Doug Welker. I am joined, as always, by Josh Rhodes. We are having another episode here of Pull and Trigger. Today, we're going to talk about Sport Mod, the class in Trigger King. As our season is upcoming here at the end of March, we're going to kick it off. And we did Retro, uh, Outlaw Retro last week. We're going to do Sport Mod this week. We're going to do Pro Mod next week. Josh, you want to say what's up? Hey, what's going on, everybody? This class is basically the uh, era of the fastest monster truck racing in the world that we tried to base this off of. And I think that uh, we did a really good job with everything we got set up for Sport Mod. You know, let's just jump into it from right there, because, yes, this is my favorite class. This is my favorite class in Trigger King. Uh, the two trucks here that are flanked on the side of me, these are my two Sport Mods, the Rotten Apple II and the Nuclear Banana. Man, we ain't going to get to see this this week, are we? I know, man? I know. Everybody <laughs> last week, I, I saw. We don't have to do that. Um, yeah, so and those support my favorite bodies, too. My my favorite RC monster truck body is that Chevy Snoop Nose. Even though I'm more of a Ford guy, I guess, but I love the Snoop Nose body. We can talk about that a little bit because this is the era that it comes into play, really. Mm -hmm. But Sport Mod, as Josh was alluding to, the sport mod class actually started, and they'd be upset if we didn't say it. I know the Childress guys, the Childress yeah, brothers, yeah. were big on this. When Trigger King started, we only had pro mod and we had retro. There were only two classes. Well, the thought was that what if we did like a brushed class, and they had some old cantilever style, older cantilever style trucks, and it really wasn't conducive to racing the pro mod style. But um, to have like a that older 90s vibe, like a lot of us in Trigger King – love the Penda time frame and Penda is the for you younger folks is the big uh monster truck series in the early 90s throughout early to mid 90s 91 to about 97 if i remember correctly yeah and i think josh you and i would agree the glory days though of that were kind of the middle portion of it i agree 100 percent. towards the end of it it's just i mean actually i take that back from 92 on with bigfoot domination basically in the point series but it was a lot closer from, say, 92 to 95 than it was from 95 to 97. 90, yeah. 95 to 97 was just basically, here's Bigfoot and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and that's when uh, really the smackdown was laid. But the, the early years of it, too, were fun because you had all the different styles of, of – uh, the Stage 3 monster truck really came into its own, really. Exactly. You had, you had guys experimenting with the Stage 3 trucks. So you had you also had stage twos in there competing as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, the retro monster truck review this week's Columbus ninety two. We have Dan Patrick's old Keystone Cruncher truck, which was a leaf sprung truck that was competing with all these trucks with twenty plus inches of suspension travel. Wasn't Wayne's Mosaic in the Tropical Thunder? Wasn't that a was that a stage two or am I thinking? Uh, it was it was the original. It actually, I take that back. It was Nightlife two that he bought from Dave Weisorek uh -huh. that he turned into Tropical Thunder that he later made into a tube frame truck with, uh, I believe, coils on each side. Okay. It was, I a really, remember it was exactly. a really high center of gravity truck. Yes. Yes, it was. It, so that era was fun. And, and we'll talk more about that in a minute here. But the idea with Sport Mod, again, was to have a brushed monster truck class that got the crazy speeds down of the you know, the crazy speed of the Pro Mod trucks, the twin, in, uh, twin motor brushless clods and even the shaft trucks um, with brushless, you know, it's crazy speed, not really scale. Uh, so the idea was for the sport mod class was to, hey, have the trucks be a little bit slower, kind of have almost as spec isn't the right word because you can use clods, you can use shaft trucks in different chassis. But the idea was to slow the trucks down and have something in era similar to the early 90s, like the Penda style. That's kind of what we, we based mm -hmm. it on was Penda. And as luck would have it, Right as we started the Sport Mod class, Axial released the SMT-10. Almost, I want, it was like three months after we started Sport Mod, if I remember right. Yep, it was. We had some guys that had Axial-based vehicles in that class that they had basically taken the AR-60 axles and thrown under a chassis. I want to say Ross Henshaw's Overboard comes to mind, when the, the original Overboard that he had. Um, I think, uh, who was it? Was it? Was it Michael Arndt that had one as well? Art, yes, he had one. Uh, I had one a long time ago. I, I remember I sold it. Was it yours was yours was based off a of UFO. Well, yeah. So the truck, yes, the truck that I started Sport Mod with was a concussion chassis prototype that I saved from the scrap heap, actually. And I, yeah, I turned it into the UFO truck. And um, it was soon after, and the Childress guys had Childress chassis trucks, which is the cantilever trucks. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was, 
it was kind of fun. The chassis were a little bit different. And then the SMT 10 comes out at the absolute perfect time because that was summer of 2016, August, 2016, I remember. Uh, and fall is when it got popular. And the SMT 10 did need some work. If you were going to make it a pro mod truck, you had to bulletproof the drive line. Of course you had to put bigger tires on it regardless, add a front sway bar, but it was cheaper to do a sport mod. You basically, you could add a front sway bar and the bigger tires and you were good for being a sport mod that, well, you changed the motor too. Uh, to the you might have to change the speed controller out on the, the original SMT 10 because yeah had, so I mean had I that drag brake on it yeah you did a couple things but it was relatively cheap I mean to do it yeah it was a lot cheaper to do it that way than it was to do it the clod buster way yes and simpler much simpler too and it, it hit at the perfect time the SMT 10 guys were wanting to build trucks and come race with us that's when Trigger King started to get more popular as well and it kind of hit at the perfect time to where sport mod became our most popular class. And it is our most popular class for entries this summer. I mean, we weren't even advertising our events because we had too many people and our sport mod class, we had like 50 trucks in a club race bracket, which is, oh, yeah. Nuts. Yeah. I can remember years ago, I went to an event that Barry Musauer put on called Clotapalooza. Yeah. And we had 109 pro mod trucks. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that's, that's the biggest bracket I've ever heard. We're getting half of that just for sport mod trucks right now. In, in unadvertised club races. Exactly. Unadvertised club races. Uh, and it's, it's crazy that, um, that it's like that. And, but sport mod is so fun. And I, most people, I, I think it's, the, I mean, entry-wise, it's the most popular in our club. You can't debate that. But I think as far as what people like the most, I think I think generally that's the class also that most people like, I think, racing in the most. I know that there are guys who mainly it's pro mod or sport, some retro, Chris Blank. But um, the, the sport mod class, the racing is like a bloodbath. It is so tough. All the trucks now, especially, you know, because it was the SMT 10. Now you have all kinds of things, like even the Rotten Apple II truck, there's a Havoc, axial based Havoc. You've got all these chassis that are involved now. The SMT 10s work fantastic. Various clod setups, the ACRC stuff, um, almost everything. What's your Wildfoot, Josh? I forget. Is that a Wildfoot's is it... a ECRC K Chaos clod buster okay. based truck? Okay. Uh, the Digger 7 truck is based after digger number seven but it's an yeah. axial vehicle the chassis cost me about 150 bucks to do then the ar60s i actually had those given to me for christmas one year so i had those for free basically i had 300 bucks wrapped up into that truck by the end of it everybody says oh that's that's a complete custom job it's got to cost it no i didn't have much wrapped up into that when it was done but it turned it turned out beautiful it did yeah the digger seven looks fantastic and, and talking about digger seven so there i mean that's the era we're trying to go for and guys yeah. Uh, we don't have a real rule like you don't have to run a body style in the 90s like that style but I think we all have a gentleman's agreement for the most part to try and keep the trucks that way as much as we can um, again there's no real rule on it we have guys that are running modern bodies it's not that big of a deal but yeah and there's nothing wrong with that but to me the heart of that class is always going to be 92 to 97 penda style with those style of bodies and it almost irks me in a little bit of a way sometimes when I don't see a replica truck out there, but at the same time, it's RC. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't have replicas. I should say minor original, but I like, we have like Jeremy Mark with his beautiful Taurus three and trucks like that. And it's, it's fun to have the area the era appropriate type stuff because uh, also like Penda, I think what's interesting with sport mod, we limited it at 17 turn brushed mm -hmm. and guys are doing everything they can to get more power just like in penda when you start at penda you started to see the ludicrous the real big motors and the, the real big power kick in. do what the ludicrous speed kicks in yeah 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 space <laughs> balls uh and you know I, i've been watching some penda events here lately uh because of your retro monster truck thing i actually watched the columbus event and when fred schaefer debuted that barefoot truck with the big chrysler power in it and mm -hmm. That racing in that era, even though some people don't like drag racing, these, you know, the monster trucks, they find it boring. I don't know how you watch that and find it boring because not be excited. The trucks are like, they're all cruise missiles and most of them don't have the suspension quite figured out. They know the stage three things, a big jump, but it's not all figured out yet. Yeah. And 
a perfect example of having it not all figured out is I believe it's the semifinals of day two in Columbus when you watch Digger and Barefoot race. You had Fred in the right lane that just launches half a no man's land off of the first jump. And you had Digger seven in the other lane riding the down ramp with the rear tires and just sh shifting it in a high gear right there to get straight through no man's land to win that race and blow Fred Schaefer away. Yeah. And I think that, that race is, right there just kind of determines and shows you the progression that they were still trying to go through. Mm -hmm. A lot of sway bar stuff. I know that you could tell looking back that wasn't figured out. You had all that chassis flex. Oh yeah. Digger seven in round one and round two, one, one off to the right, one off to the left going down the straightaway. He didn't have it figured out, but somehow stayed legal. Or even look at Bigfoot eight and uh, nine didn't seem as bad, but like in early TNT, which was 1990, when Bigfoot 8 was massacring people, they still had sway bar issues for a long time that they were oh, yeah. ironing out. Yeah, they go to West Lebanon with that truck and they can't get down the track until like the, th I think it's the second or third day of the competition that they actually finally got straight down the track and ended up pulling out a win. But before that, they would jump, the truck would go off to the right. They would jump, the rear tires would catch the hole in the cars and it'd veer off to the left. And you'd see Andy have to get on the brakes and really gather himself up. And by that point, he'd already lost the advantage that he had off the start. Yeah, and especially in that era, too, you had the USA-1. That was when USA-1 was in full-on cruise missile mode toward the truck either went straight or spectacular crash, so that could actually keep up with Bigfoot 8. Um, we don't really have, in this class, there aren't many Stage 2-style vehicles that are running like you would see sometimes in the Penda, like we're talking about how you would see Stage 2 trucks uh, who did, ha or Stage 2.5, you could call them. We don't really have that. I know Chris uh, Tolbert, converted that J Concepts regulator retro truck into a four link truck kind of with that idea. I think he did that just for he a did pretty good. He did pretty good with that. I believe he sold it here recently, but he, he did. did. Pretty, he did pretty good with that truck. Other than that. I mean, he's a good driver anyway. Yeah. I was going to say, Chris is a wheel man too. He can, he can wheel kind of anything. Uh, and he's pretty good at it, but it was pretty cool to see that. It would it'd be kind of neat to see some of that other stuff uh, come back with it. And again, you have, like some of the children's chassis styles, the twin cantilever set up. And again, you would see cantilevers not, I mean, that kind of filtered its way out mid the mid nineties, but you would see some of the cantilever stuff early. And it's fun to see that in the RC. And uh, we, you mentioned some of the replica paint jobs. We've got some really cool guys running really nice replicas of various trucks, even some of the smaller, smaller names, if you will, mm -hmm. um, that, that ran back then. But it's fun to see a lot of that stuff in the, in the, the, this sport mod class. I'm trying to think if we have any, you know, to talk about some actual rules or setups for it. Um, well, 17 it, turn motors, but you can, you really have the ability to adjust those motors. You can turn the timing up in them. Like I have with the wild foot truck. Yeah. When nope. I first started in that class, I was just running zero degree timing in the truck. And I kept wondering why, why am I getting beat? <laughs> like, why isn't this truck as fast as these other guys? And then it dawned on me, Hey, I can mess with the timing. It's not a rule. So I messed with the timing and now by God, it almost looks like that truck. There's something cheating inside that thing because it takes off so that fast. That truck is fast. It's crazy fast. And it's funny also with this gearing is a super important thing in this class. You're not allowed to mess with gearing in Outlaw Retro. And in Pro Mod, gearing doesn't really matter because we have motors with that are turning RPMs to where the gearing, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. This class gearing matters. And yes, it does. I've got my trucks I actually don't remember offhand what I have in them pinion wise, but I have the tallest pinion I can put in either of them. And they're pushed to the point to where I remember last year, my nuclear banana truck, one of those days, I, I ran pretty good in both of my sport mod trucks this last year. So I would, I would go fairly deep into some of those brackets and on some of the long courses, I remember one of the summer events, cause we, we got cooked this summer. Like it was hot almost every oh, yeah. race day. I remember, um, you know, because I pulled the truck off, you kind of just pulled the truck off, leave your radio on until the next round. I remember one of those events I got to the finals, the nuclear banana truck was so hot that I burned my finger in the finals because it just didn't have adequate time to cool down because the truck is geared to the moon and you run, I don't know how many runs you got to make to win a bracket, but when you're talking 50 trucks, at least five or six. Five or six runs easy. And when, when we have some of those longer tracks that we ran, where you're talking 25, 30 seconds, of wide open throttle mm -hmm. the trucks get hot and i know this is the class the where trucks, that trucks is got hot from that and they also got hot from sitting out in the sun because we had yeah, them all that, sitting at the end of the track right being baked 
Yeah, you have the ambient temperature won't allow that. And that does factor into it. And guys will blow motors in this class and other things because heat, is, this is a class where heat is the issue. And it's funny, it's kind of like you would see in the real thing when the trucks, you have to give them time to cool. And in this, we don't, I mean, there's no real downtime. So when you've got these trucks that are geared to the moon, motors that are advanced timing, we push these vehicles as hard as we can, the electronics, really. That's that's what we're that you're trying to do. You're trying to get as fast as you can. And I don't we it's a battle. I don't think we've really had one. I'm trying to think of an advantage over one style or the other. I know the clods definitely have the speed advantage typically in this class because yeah. the twin, you know, the, the dual motors, but I don't really feel like I'm totally outgunned always. No, you're not outgunned because you have way more steering than the clod buster does. Again, yes. Actually, SMT10 allows you to have more throw in the front than a clod buster does. You've really got to shave down a clod buster's knuckles to even get a, a semblance of the throw that the SMT10 has. Again, me with a throttle brake technique, I can get the front end to pivot down and pivot off that right or left front tire to get it around a corner. But the SMT10s, all they got to do is kind of let off the gas and just work right around that corner. And they're already on the throttle by the time I'm still doing this with the trigger, try to get the truck to settle. Yeah, the clod guys, I've noticed that uh, although Bob does fantastic, I think he's running. I which uh, I'm trying to think which trucks he's running in this one. That I think uh, he, he had he had the Bigfoot Cruiser at one point. He had the Bigfoot Racer Stripe at one point. And honestly, I think that's his class. He's he's won probably the most championships in that class now. The, now that I think of it, in class. him and Brandon Scott seem to always throw down in that class. And there's there's a chassis war right there too with the SoCal Warpath chassis and the ACRC Havoc or Chaos, whichever one Bob's running at the time. Yeah, I was going to say whichever truck. I forget which body he's running on which which the, the uh, chassis. But yeah, Brandon Brandon runs great with the Warpath. I'd forgotten, you know, he's he's always one of the top runners in that class. There were very few gimmies in Sport Mod, though. It feels like it's, it's just a, it's a huge battle. I know typically that's the most competitive, although now it's not like it used to be. The points races are actual points races now where a lot of trucks in the top one, but sport mod is crazy. The swings, because if you get hot one day in sport mod, you could almost not win a championship, but really help yourself. At least the top three in points. If yeah. you get really hot. I think there was, if I remember right, there was only one sweep last season in sport mod, as far as brackets go. And that came in the final event with uh, Chris Parrish and barefoot. Oh yeah. I think that was the only time we had a guy sweep both brackets. It's just hard to do that, even if you've got two trucks that are good. Hard to win multiple brackets in that class the entire season. I know. It's. I feel like that's your. That's kind of the biggest feather in the cap. I feel like in Trigger King is to win Sport Mod. I know that that might not be the case because Pro Mod is Pro Mod, but personally, I just feel like because everything is so bunched up, I feel like that Sport Mod is really where the. I mean that's. I, I think I'd, I'd be the most proud winning that, I suppose, out of all the classes, just because of that. Yeah, you're just saying that because I haven't won it yet. <laughs> throw that, throw, throw, I, actually, throw me in the bus a little I bit. forget you have it. Um, <laughs> I did, win, I think I won it, yeah. I think I won a championship a few years ago, but that was when the first, my first Rotten Apple truck and the first SMT 10, that was, so that was a while ago. Trust me, I'm, I, I've been behind the eight ball. I normally, I'm good if I finish top 10 I'm, or five or six, somewhere around there. I ran okay last season. But I'm hoping um, I've been into truck prep and I'm, I'm hoping that this year is much better. I'm excited to see what new trucks are going to come out, too, because we always have new sport mods come out. It'll be interesting to see where the LMT fits in, because it's technically legal if you put the different tires. But I don't think that uh, we're going to see them much because that truck's too heavy. It's too heavy and it's, it's more designed for a five millimeter motor shaft. And I don't know of any brushed motor out there that has a five millimeter motor shaft. Exactly. You can make it work, but you've probably got to shave that inlet in there to get the motor in and make it work right i just don't see a 17 turn motor pushing those axles and that truck to be very fast at all i agree i just don't think it's a i don't think it's a platform really that should be for that uh, was, we're not going to see many of them in there it's going to be a pro mod or the spec class um that everybody's with them mm -hmm. but uh yeah i i still think yeah, that's what's funny when people when the lmt came out and people are like oh the smt is dead no no, it's not. On the racetrack, I mean, you can say what you want, you know, basher wise, you and I are racers. So we're kind of, we live in our, our special bubble where we're hardcore racers, but the SMT 10 is not going anywhere. It's still going to be, I think the platform of choice in the, in the sport mod, because it doesn't take much to, to make it really work well mm -hmm. for, uh, for sport. 
yeah, it doesn't take much at all. Like I said, pull it out of the box, take the wimpy tires off, put the big tires on, throw in a different speed controller, throw in a 17 turn motor, throw a front sway bar on the truck, put whatever body or design chassis design you want underneath of it. And you are good to go in that class. Yeah. And I think uh, we could talk tires here for a minute. We didn't in retro really talk tires because golden years are kind of what everybody just uses. That's really the tire that if you want golden to be years or firestorms in retro or firestorms. Yes. Most in this guys class, we're in, in sport mod. We're wide open. You can use whatever, but I mean, the renegade is the, the, the high end one. I know the pro line guys would. Yep. Yep. The renegade tire right here. This is the tire of choice for most guys in sport modified um usually blue compound this is a gold depends if we're running indoors outdoors or outdoor yeah. yeah of course outdoors it's going to be the blues but uh closed cell foams also crawler innovations foams work killer i have those for the first season i have them in my nuclear banana truck it is amazing how those things just that truck jumps so smooth it's just oh, yeah yeah i uh i stumbled across those after talking to a few guys from the nrc tpa put them in uh, my sport mods as well as a pro mod truck. And it was a night and day difference of how those trucks jumped and landed. I would, it, it's shocking. And if you're out there and even if you're not racing, if you just want something, you don't want to mess with your truck, try those closed cell foams, put them in renegades and watch. It's, it's normally just wild in, in how they work. But in talking about the tires, you do see some of the guys, I know Brandon's a pro line guy. Uh, he's got his pro lines. I think what is the devastators that he's running? I believe. I believe so yeah, he's um, uh, he's experimented with some tires. I know that. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to go with some J concepts this season, though. Uh, just a hunch that I've got. <laughs> you hear me, Brandon? You need to do it so you prove me right. But anyway, um, Brandon's always kind of experimented with his tires, and I always like seeing what Brandon brings to the table. That's kind of like I said. That's him and Bobby seem to be the two guys that really, really always run well in that class and are very tough to beat. Yeah, I have to say, like, mentally, if Jason Rohn is not there, I we should say that. Jason no, I don't know is, about uh, that. I think we can beat him, too. I It's funny, this last year with Jason, I remember one of the races he came out. And uh, when we talked about the racer episode of, like, mental, like, how do you prepare mentally? And I remember before that, it was in my rotten apple truck. I was like, I'm going to run Jason. I'd run well that day, and I've never beat Jason in competition, I don't believe in I don't remember what truck he had. I think it's Summit Racing Truck or maybe. Um, but anyways, yeah, I gave him, I ran as good as I possibly could in my Apple II truck, which that, the, my Rotten Apple II truck is my favorite truck in my fleet. I love that truck and uh, my ACRC Havoc. And I barely lost still, but I, it was when I felt like, you know what? Okay. I gave him everything that truck could do, me as a driver, and I still got beat. So you tip your cap and it's like, you just try better. So whenever like a Jason comes in, I feel like that's always such a good measuring stick. And Michael Arndt doesn't ever race with us anymore. I know he watches these shows and he always comments to me privately. Uh, and he wants to be on one at some point, Michael, come race with us again. Exactly. Come race with us. And we might put you on one until then you can just be an audience member. Michael. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, there, Michael, come down, come on. Season opener. You know, we're here in March. We're taping this on March 3rd. We're within a month now of racing outdoors again. And I'm really missing it. I, I can't wait to get out there with these trucks again. I'm back in truck prep mode, tightening bolts, cinching everything down, cleaning them up. And I cannot wait to race these. I can't wait to get the sport mods on the dirt at the JB graphics place. You know, John, well, when we start racing there again, and it's going to be a fun summer. I look for sport mod to be an absolute war. Yeah, I do too. It's, it always is a war. I'd expect nothing less out of that class. I compare that class to watching NASCAR at Talladega because uh, the competition is just as close. Yeah, that's actually a good way to put it. Yeah, it, with less spectacular wrecks than <laughs> Talladega. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know Usually. about that. There's been a couple of sport mod wrecks where you're kind of cringing back there, going, "Ooh." The might... sport mod. The funny part of this is the speed of sport mod is that creeping up there to where I know people at all the events are like, "Should we slow these trucks down?" But I'm pretty hell bent on not doing that because. To me, if guys have a 17 turn motor, let them do what they can to get it out of it. Again, we're this is the Penda era we're replicating where guys are doing everything to get weight off and get power. And if there was, again, a, a big competitive imbalance, maybe, but even like you, Josh, I know that you've got your big power in Wildfoot. Now, unless let's, oh, this is something important to talk about. So 
we don't always do the drag races. I know a lot of people do. Now, here's the thing. If we were doing drag races all the time, I think then I'd have more of an issue because I think in a drag race, the clods have a pretty significant advantage over the shaft trucks. They, they do. They do. Especially uh, short saying, saying that, though, it all still comes down to a whole shot. Yes, that's true. And my trucks, again, I've got a single motor and I have advanced timing, but it's not, I don't have the speed that you or like Travis Sutton in his overkill truck. He's got twin motors there, big power. Ross always has a fast truck who, I'm trying to think of some of the other really fast trucks that are out there that run in sport mod that you know kind of have the, the big power. If it's a, a short drag track, okay. But um, the big thing too with drag racing, if we could have a good timing system or not even a timing system, if we could have a good Christmas tree just to launch the trucks to where we could really tell if somebody red lit or had a whole shot or, or whatever, I think drag racing then becomes a lot more fun. And for me as a guy who loves drag racing, I think it's important to have that too, because you can play the starting line games with people. You can, you can deep stage, uh, you can do all that stuff. And the Traxxas system just was never, it was way too temperamental whenever we would try and use it. And you can run in a starting line mode only. And it was too temperamental. And we've got so many vehicles trying to run through a race that it just got old trying to jack with it all the time. I would hope Losey has that new drag car that came out, which looks sick. And I know in that promo video, they had a Christmas tree. It looked like a Team Losey Christmas tree. Now it looked like they might've been a home built thing, a one-off, but if it's not, I really hope we can get one for Trigger King and that it's less temperamental because then I think it would be more fun to drag race. As is, we just work off of a light and it's improper. Like it's, there's, it's not very scientific. And so oh, yeah. it's, we work, me, we, work off, we work off the light or we work off of go. Yeah. And <laughs> like the old guys did in, you know, the very, very old days. And uh, that makes it, it, it doesn't, it's fine for turning courses because they're more imprecise and there's more variables. But I think if you don't have a Christmas tree and you're trying to drag race, you miss a whole lot of the, gamesmanship of it because like for me i'm proud like i am a i'm a rc drag racer i like to mess with drag cars and i know i can cut a light and i like to screw with people on the starting line i like it i like to if i can cut a light on a guy um you can mess with them like that if you really put a whole shot on somebody so i would love to do more penda style drags but we need a good uh light system i think for that to really be efficient otherwise the clods even though you're right you do have to keep it straight and that is a problem. Otherwise though, that's the only time I feel like there is a significant advantage that does take place is the clods over the shaft trucks. Whereas the turning, as you're saying, the turning does mitigate that any, like quite a bit, I think. Yeah, the turning does mitigate it. Um, I will say there are some shafty trucks out there that are really fast. Ross Henshaw's Rambo is yeah. extremely quick SMT 10. I think he may be fooling us. I think he's probably got another motor hiding in that thing somewhere. So Ross, I'm calling you out and I'm going to check it out this weekend when I see it MTRC. Travis, I know Travis has that TXT, that uh, Tamiya twin system, mm -hmm. and he's got some hot motors in that one um, that are all like, he's got that ready to go. But again, though, I never really have felt at a disadvantage with the fast guys because a lot of times they'll spin out or they'll do some other stuff. And if you miss a ramp or anything, you still have to hit all that. And, and normally... Yeah. For whatever reason, despite all the crazy chassis setups that Sport Mod uses, despite all the different power systems, the motors, guys, dynoing motors, it all kind of evens out. It feels like there's really no true competitive advantage where one guy pulls up to the line and everybody's like, well, that truck's got such an advantage. It's going to win. Maybe on a very certain track type that you have that, but for the most part, I think it's a driver's class still. Yeah, I agree. And you're talking straight line. I remember the straight line that we did that was based off of Penda specs last season. And I remember everybody, it seems like everybody would walk up to me was picking Wildfoot to win that thing. I went out in the semifinals with Wildfoot, lost to Rambo. Yeah. I, it's, and it's I remember that. It really is. I remember that. That was a, uh, that was a fun, uh, a fun thing. I hope, I'm hoping this year we can do some Penda stuff in it again, a little more than we did last year. I think we could do more, but man, I so hope with the explosion of these drag cars that somebody is going to get with a good timing system. That's not a pain in the butt to set up. Yeah, I agree. I, I want, like, like you said, I don't necessarily care about the times themselves. Yeah. I just want a really good working Christmas tree that we can go off of and we can cut a light off of. And it's very clear whether this guy, this lane red lit or that lane red lit. I don't care yeah. if we've got the timing system set up where you got to stomp on it with your foot at the end of the track just to get to the end but just as long as it shows there's a clear red in one lane, 
versus the guy in the other lane that went clear green. I'm happy with that. that. You know, the Traxxas system, we never messed with it before with that, but the Traxxas system can do that. You put the Traxxas system in the, in the practice mode and you only do the starting line. It doesn't even affect the, the, uh, the timing. There is no timing. You can turn that off. And I wish I still had one. The problem is there's so much money now to get one of those things. And uh, if nothing else, if Traxxas would reissue them, I would just get another one and we could just experiment with the start. I think it wouldn't be as bad because then you're not, um, people in theory shouldn't be banging the starting line. But again, for a drag race, when you don't have a timing or a Christmas tree, you're taking a lot of the the real fun of it out, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's why, if, cause, so if people are asking, why don't we run more straight line stuff in Trigger King? I guess that that's just what I'm trying to explain here that we want to run more, but um yeah that's what makes it fun a lot of it i guess uh you know we've talked a bit here while josh you kind of have anything to kind of close this down well uh like like you said this this is probably one of your favorite class this is probably a lot of people's favorite class it's it's for a long time for me i'll just honestly say it it was kind of like my throwaway class like you were talking about having oh i've got retro off i can work the record of a computer yeah. last week. for me this used to be this used to be my break now not so much anymore. I've gotten more into it. I've started to tune things. Once you get that racer mentality going in this class, it's hard to turn it off. That's why I really like this class. That's why I think it's our most competitive class, because once you get started into it, a lot of guys just want to keep modding and keep going and trying to figure out what they can do to make those motors go just a little bit faster in their truck versus everybody else. Yeah, we didn't even talk about how the trucks act a lot like the full scale ones in this class. You don't have the ludicrous power. So you have a truck that the races sort of look like a real full scale race, you know, like a clod that if you scaled it up, would be going like ludicrous miles an hour in, oh, yeah. in, or even the, again, even the, the shaft trucks too. Um, it's different. It's different. These, these races are, they're more controlled. Um, I just dig it. I, I love sport mod. Sport mod is my favorite class. Although I have to say, I think this year I'm going to really, really like this LMT spec class. I think that it's going to be sort of like Chroma, just a little bit tighter. And I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. But I, I do love sport. And I'm happy to have my two trucks. And they're both, as Army would say, they're ready to go to war. I'm going to have their war paint on and uh, ready to go from the get-go this year without trying to chase setups or anything. I should have two really good trucks that are ready to rock and roll. Yep. I hope I do, too. Uh going to put digger seven off the side for a little bit and run this havoc excalibur truck that i've been trying slowly work to work with and uh wildfoot as well really can't wait to get him out on the track i can't wait to see everybody again so we can get out on the dirt we're just gonna have a lot of fun it will be it'll be fun um well i guess with that guys next week we are going to be talking the pro mod trucks the, the hobby guy, shop class the what <laughs> the hobby shop class yes sponsored by it when you call it that <laughs> yeah yeah it's the parts class it's the expensive class and uh, it's the freestyle class too. That's what a lot of the freestyle trucks go. And Josh is, uh, I, I know as I was talking, Sport Mod's my favorite class. I know Pro Mod is your favorite. So it'll be fun to, uh, to talk about that, talk about your digger and, and everything else there. So I guess before we go, Josh, as always, you want to plug anything? A retro Monster Truck Review this week, Columbus 1992 with Matt Stoltz. Uh, really looking forward to having that one hit. It was a really fun conversation. Follow it on Instagram at Retro MT Review. Follow it on Facebook, Retro Monster Truck Review. As always, Josh Rhodes RC Racing on Facebook and Josh Dig Rhodes on Instagram. Hey, and a, a shout out here because it's, it's going to come up. Um, we are going to be on there. I'm going to be guesting again on Josh's Retro MT uh, Review podcast with one of my favorite events of all time. And I cannot wait to talk. It's going to be a long episode probably, but it is Dallas slash Irving, Texas, 1990. TNT, the three wides, which is uh, one of the most unique and legendary monster truck races or two races, if you will, of all time. I cannot wait to talk about that. So I'm actually, we get off air here. I can't wait to watch and start again, start taking notes, copious notes for these, for that. So um, check out Josh's podcast. And with that guys, we're going to sign off here. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching as always pro mod next week. And we cannot wait to get back to racing. So I'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, for Josh, for me, uh, we will see you guys next week.